Mr. President, I want to thank you very much for the gift of the beer. Please continue to send me all your best. I will certainly appreciate it. Sign, Brian the Writer. Well, hello. Thank you for joining me again in the crypt, in our lair. Tonight, I have quite the story for you. Growing up, I loved ghost stories. Some of my favorites I read time and time again, so I write my own on occasion. <clears throat> Let's begin. Helen Borowitz sat in the fellowship hall nursing a cup of coffee. She admired the newly painted walls. They were far more colorful than when this fellowship hall was new. Back then they were painted in industrial white. She remembered spending a weekend in this room painting. She was 30 years younger back then. Now, the walls were the color of autumn leaves. Helen liked it better this way. It reminded her less of a nursing home. Today, she was waiting for the arrival of her closest and dearest friend, Edith. Her second cousin, born on almost the same day, Helen and Edith were almost inseparable. They went to school together, lived one block away, and lived through World War II together as teenage girls. It was a hard life back in those days made more bearable by being able to depend on each other. The door connecting the fellowship hall with the sanctuary opened and two young women walked in. Behind them, a hunched elderly woman snuck in. Helen smiled at her husband, cousin. Edith seemed to be moving better than she had in years. Although close to 90, she still looked good for her age. Helen knew of the cancer inside of her, but Edith didn't let it slow her down. Hi, cousin. Helen smiled at Edith, who took a chair on the other side of the table. Edith smiled back. Hi, sweetie. How are you feeling? Helen winced a little. Oh, you know. It's hell getting old. Do, what you, do you want a coffee or anything? Edith smiled what she called her best million-dollar smile. No, thank you, sweetie. I don't need anything. Have you given any more thought to what we talked about before? Although Edith was the closest thing Helen had to assi her sister, she could be a downright pest sometimes. Recently, she had been hounding Helen about making sure her affairs were in order. Edith insisted that Helen really never knew the time or the date, but the end would come soon enough, and it would be better off if her affairs were in order. Helen let out an exasperated sigh. I did. I talked to Karen about final arrangements and where things were in the house when the time comes. I made sure my will is up to date, but you know, it always makes me worried thinking about that. Am I ready? I mean, am I really ready for the end of my life? Edith grabbed her cousin's hand. How'd she take it? Oh, as well as can be expected, I suppose. No one is ever comfortable talking about death. Look at us, at the end of our lives, having this conversation. Someday soon we'll be in the afterlife together. Edith was dressed in her Sunday best. It was off-white and speckled with sequins. She had worn it every Sunday since Helen could remember. It was beautiful on her. It was dignified and appropriate for just about any occasion. Helen, I've known you my whole life. Literally, we started out as friends before either one of us could even hold a baby bottle. I know all of your secrets. I know every dream, every disappointment. But most importantly, I know what's in your heart. You're ready. <clears throat> in the distance, people were talking and pointing at Helen. She ignored them. Look at those people. They have no idea. I tried to tell them, but they don't get it. They just tell me that I'm in good shape and I'll live forever. They don't understand. Kids today have no idea how hard it is to get old, and they won't until it sneaks up on them. Just then, a hand grasped Helen's shoulder. Startled a bit, she turned to face the man belonging to the hand. It was Juan Sanchez. Helen, honey, do you need anything? No, we're just sitting here talking, Helen gestured to Edith. I see. He knelt down on the floor next to her so he could be at eye level. He looked concerned and stared out at the table for a moment. Do you need anyone to take you home? No, thank you. I'm just going to finish this coffee and we'll be on our way. I have a visitor for lunch today. She has agreed to escort me home, Helen smiled at Edith. He chuckled. Okay. Helen, I have a question for you. Do you know what day it is? Helen shook her head at the man for a moment. 
she thought to herself it was odd that a man who was supposed to be a medical doctor would be so forgetful as to not remember the day. Dr. Sanchez, you need to pay better attention. It is Sunday, the 18th of September, 12,016. It was printed in the bulletin. Maybe it's you who needs help getting home today. He laughed at her reaction to the question. All right, dear. Maybe I'll give you a call later. You take care of yourself. I'll see you next weekend. And my offer stands. When you decide you no longer want to live by yourself, you can come over to the retirement home. I'll keep a spot open for you. That's sweet of you, but as long as I can clean my own house, I'll stay there, Mr. My Stanley, gone 15 years now, helped build that home after he helped build this church. My home is where I'd like to die, if possible. Edith looked at Helen and gave her a supporting nod. Well, okay then. I guess I'll get my family home. He stood up and returned to the crowd of onlookers. <clears throat> Edith put her hands on the table. He's such a nice man. And a good doctor. Remember when I stayed in the retirement home for a little while? He took such good care of me. It was a huge relief when I finally went home, though. Like a huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders. <clears throat> Helen took a final drink of her coffee. You look so much better these days. You got so gaunt there for a while. <clears throat> now you positively radiate health. I like to think of it as wholeness. Edith stood up from the table. Shall we go? It looks like your coffee's gone. Helen looked down at the cup. So it is. Let's get going. It's so nice of you to join me today. The walk home is lonely. Sometimes I think about Stanley. We probably made that walk a million times since... It was so close. We even walked in the rain. Do you remember that? He loved the rain. Edith followed Helen through the doors of the Fellowship Hall and out into the sunlight of the warm summer day. I do. Stanley is a good man. Was, Helen corrected her, was a good man. Still is. You don't really think that people stop being good because they are dead, do you? The soul lives on and they are still the people they were in life. Perhaps they are wiser. Helen put her hand on her chin. You know, I never really gave it much thought. I suppose if you were good in life, you would be good in death, too. You have a gorgeous house, Edith said. She, they turned up the driveway. I really do, don't I? Stanley did a great job. He was such a great man. I get tired of missing him, though. He's been gone for so long now that I would have thought the pain of losing him would have gone away, but it hasn't. Helen fished her keys out of her handbag and opened the door. The house had essentially remained the same since Stanley died. It was maybe a little cleaner. He was not known for his house cleaning skills. The only thing Helen had added since, the dis since was the display of additional family members. How are the grandkids? Edith asked, looking at the images on the wall. They're good, growing like weeds. Little Katie is now getting ready for her wedding. No longer little Katie, I guess. Bobby and his boyfriend are moving upstate to New York. They both love the outdoors and want to be want to open an outdoor adventures company. He's a good kid. Helen yawned against the day's activity. I hope you don't think I'm being rude, cousin, but I have to take a little nap. No, well, that's not rude. You take a nap. I'll just occupy myself watching some television. Helen retired to her room. She sleep came easier than normal. Perhaps it was the wonder of having her cousin with her. She dreamed of Edith and her church dress. Such a beauty in her old age. She secretly admired her cousin for her ability to age so gracefully. She could see her lying there in that dress. She was so lovely. She carried a small bouquet of roses, her favorite flowers, mixed with baby's breath, surrounded by a wonderful lining of white silk. She looked almost serene in her mahogany casket. Helen woke with a start. How could it be? Her cousin had been dead and buried these two years. She remembered the day that beautiful casket was lowered into the ground, deep down into the forbidding earth. Edith sat at the edge of the bed. She smiled at her cousin. Helen grabbed Edith's hands and looked at her, wide-eyed. I remember your funeral. I laid that bouquet of flowers on you as you rested there. They lowered your body into the ground. I'm not crazy, am I? Edith smiled at Helen and brushed a piece of wild hair from her face. Still holding her hand, she helped her out of bed, and they walked into the center of the room. She grabbed her other hand and looked into Helen's eyes. No, cousin, you're not crazy at all. It was a beautiful day. You wore a blue dress that looked smashing on you. 
You always were a smart dresser. I love the way, I love the flowers, by the way. Helen stammered, but how? How can you be here? I promised to take you home. I promised to help you arrive safely, didn't I? I kept that promise. Now it's time to go. Edith pointed back toward the bed. Helen turned toward what her cousin pointed at. Lying there perfectly still was her own body. It looked far more fragile than she'd ever remembered herself being. Floods of emotions converged on her all at once. She was scared and at the same time relieved. She thought about Stanley, her own mother and father. All of those people she was scared she'd never see again. I told you, Edith, I'm here to take you home. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed this story, which I'm putting free on Patreon, please consider uh, becoming a patron, either at the $1 or the $5 level. And, uh, and I'm going to create some more great short stories for you. And uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you very much.